Hello, and welcome to another Top 5 exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. And I'm Ed. <laughs> and today on the Top 5, uh, we'll be talking about the Top 5 episodes of Batman the Animated Series. <laughs> With all the Batman talk that's been happening, we decided on talk, uh, talking about what I feel is the definitive uh, version of Batman outside of the comic books. We of both course. have such love for this cur- this cartoon and we yes. thought it was time to bring it up again. So, uh, mm-hmm. did you want to start off on this one? Or? Sure. Um, my number 5, I'm going to go to a, a first season episode of The Clock King. Oh, yeah. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because you'll go, oh, the Clock King. But that's just it, is that that dude isn't even one of the major baddies of, of the Batman universe. But that episode, for instance, is, is does a really good job of showing how even the minor villains can be threatening. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, for you, those of you who don't know, the Clock King was a, 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 a former accountant who was obsessed with his schedule. And one day yeah. his schedule gets off and he th- throws his entire life out of whack. And he blames his former boss for having destroyed him. Mm-hmm. So he's de- determined to, you know, re- run a re- or, uh, start a reign of terror. Mm-hmm. And, he, and it's all schedule based. And he's so methodically planned everything that he can get away from Batman by a, you know, a train schedule. He does, you know, he, he has he has sets a trap on a clock at the end. Mm-hmm. And it's it, it's great in just showing like careful planning in the Batman world is makes it really fun. And threatening without without power or muscle. Oh yeah, you're absolutely right. You do make a good point at how something, a character who's kind of minor in <clears throat> the overall scheme of Batman can make such an impression. I I also like the design how his glasses looked like yeah. clocks, and he had a sword that looked like the arm of a clock and everything. It was it was a good episode. I like that. Totally one. fun. <clears throat> so moving on to my number five episode. Uh, my number five is actually a two parter, and it was titled Robin's Reckoning. Terrific um, choice. Robin hasn't been portrayed that great in the many different variations of Batman, especially in the movies. Uh, here in the animated show, uh, he is really dealt with very, very well. Uh, we get to see uh, Dick Grayson's uh, background through told through flashback. Voiced by Lauren Lester, I believe. Unfortunately, I didn't write it down. I, but, uh, I think that's right. And his development to <clears throat> becoming who he is. And then all of a sudden, he finds he realizes who... Or how, how do I say it? He finds the guy who was responsible for his parents' death, and then he kind of goes out of whack and wants to take revenge, and Batman um, understands it, because, I mean, he was pretty much in the exact same yep. position, too. And the entire two episodes mm-hmm. uh, tell the story of Batman trying to help Robin uh, deal with this whole situation and, and get through it uh, emotionally. So it's a fantastic episode for that character. And it reinforces that theme that's always Batman about using force but not lethal force mm-hmm. yeah. and you know what what lines he draws mm-hmm. when it comes to justice yeah. <clears throat> well uh, my number four is another multi-parter it was originally called world's finest um mm-hmm. I- if you look for it on video you'll often see it's advertised as the batman superman movie this oh. was the first crossover between yes. different animated franchises in this in this bruce tim paul dini world mm-hmm. and it is one of the best it's really fun mm-hmm. um that when Bruce Bruce Wayne um, Bruce Wayne figures out who who that Superman's Clark Kent just through detective work, just because oh, yeah, just because yeah. he's smart. Yeah, yeah, that's the bat. That's Batman, damn it. Yes, and and uh, Clark er, er, Superman immediately knows who Bruce, who Bruce is because he looks Cause right he, through right. his cowl. Yeah, and that's great. And the, and you get Joker playing with Lex Luthor and Harley Quinn and uh, and Lex's. Um, Oh, what's what was her name? The the henchwoman that Oof. Lex had. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I uh, Melody or something. I'm I'm it's, screwing that up. Yeah. But um, it's a great fun playground where all the characters get to mix, and it is it is super fun to watch. It's a it's a great showdown between Superman's um, you know brute force and Batman's superior intellect, and the way they clash <clears throat> heads is pretty awesome yeah it's awesome uh okay moving on to my number four um my number four episode was titled almost got him uh almost put this one on my batman list. had the greatest <clears throat> rogues gallery ever you could put that up with any superhero out there um and this episode it's all about the best of his villains pretty much coming together and talking about how they almost killed batman we have penguin poison ivy joker killer croc and two-face all they do is just sit around a table, 
playing cards and just waxing stories, you know, just saying, man, I almost had him. No, the way I had him was better. Oh, my my death trap was better than yours. And the way they clashed heads, um, the, the way they even battled each other, um, the writing in that episode was fantastic. It's an episode that's just a lot of fun. I mean, nothing really big happens, but we really get a good look at these characters and just what makes them who they are. Yeah, it's <clears throat> that's a that's a totally fun fun terrific episode too. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, my number three uh, is an is probably my only Joker centric episode on this uh, list, and it's Mad Love. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was actually turned into a, a an Eisner winning comic as well, but it's kind of the origin story of Harley Quinn, who was the biggest probably the biggest name to come out of this whole series, uh, it, who was created for this series. It, it, she was she made such an impression <clears throat> that the comics adopted her from the TV show. Yeah, Kevin Smith named his daughter after her. Yep. Um, and, and Harley's a, a great character, and it's her origin story. It's how she was. Uh, a doctor treating the Joker, and her sympathy, her empathy for him, turned her. It's it's basically how the Joker can get inside someone's head, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. it is, and it turns into this, what eventually becomes a horribly abusive relationship, which is great fun to watch. It's both hilarious <laughs> and sad all yeah. at the same time. Yeah, it's kind of funny how you mentioned that it's about you know an abusive relationship, and yet it's so entertaining. It is so funny, <laughs> and it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know how they pull it off, but they pulled it off somehow with that episode. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on to my number three. Uh, my number three is another two-parter, and it deals with. Two Face, Mr. Harvey Dent, and his transformation from being the DA to being this criminal. Uh, Richard Mole. Yeah. From Night Court. <laughs> anyway. You have Harvey Dent, who was actually a character in the show, so we know who he was before we reached these episodes. Um, and we learned that he has this split personality. There's the good Harvey Dent and the bad Harvey Dent. And then um, his situation is how do you say, manipulated by the, the mobster Rupert Thorne, and then he pretty much falls prey to it, and then Batman tries to come in and tries to save him, but isn't able to, you know, prevent that terrible accident from happening. And throughout the second episode, Batman has to deal with not being able to be there to save him. I think there's that famous, or not famous, but there's that well-known um, dream sequence where Batman's like, oh, I couldn't save Harvey Dent, I couldn't, sa like, I couldn't save my parents as well. It's just a great great episode um, a little dark a little sad but definitely worth it good use of the gangsters in the world as well oh, and yeah. their influence with these characters yeah good choice um my number two is uh an episode called legends of the dark knight uh, which yes. is um a really fun episode where they basically flat kind of pay tribute to different eras of batman's past and future um there's some kids talking about like, oh, I saw the Batman once, and then they do this flashback to like this Dick Sprang, 1940s, um, very pop art kind of you know old style Biff Pam yeah. Bam, uh, Joker is in the Bat Cave with some henchmen attacking Batman with a giant coin, and um, and then they also jump forward to a Frank Miller. Uh, Dark Knight Returns future as well with the post-apocalyptic uh, wasteland and Robin mm -hmm. is a girl and the Batmobile is a tank and those are both kind of shown as the mythical side of Batman and the reality is also in the real world Batman's fighting I believe it's the Firefly mm -hmm. in a theater and you kind of get to see oh, well yeah, here's yeah, what yeah, he actually kind of looks like as well. But it's it's a, a, a great way to pay tribute to like all of the artists who have worked on this guy over the years. Oh sure, yeah, it, it's great the way they, like you said, pay tribute to the many variations mm -hmm. of of the character and pretty much shows how much the show was influenced by them. Totally. Yeah. Okay, moving on to my number two. Uh, my number two episode is, in my opinion, the best written of the entire series. It won an Emmy for Outstanding Writing, and it is the episode titled Heart of Ice. Uh, this is where we get to learn of Mr. Victor Freeze, or Mr. Freeze as he is well known. Michael and, how and he, Sarah. And how he became to be. <laughs> uh, just a very, very sad, tragic uh, story about this scientist who does this experiment to save his wife, but then his boss all of a sudden comes in and ruins everything. There's a terrible accident that turns Victor Freeze into Mr. Freeze. He can't live outside of uh, freezing temperature, and he pretty much is obsessed with getting revenge. Uh, 
the dialogue in this episode is absolutely outstanding every time uh mr freeze has a monologue about saving his wife and how his wife has to be trapped in that water tank uh forever it's just so heartbreaking and the animation's amazing uh just everything about it there i don't i don't even know where to go because it's such a fantastic episode um i, I just loved it so. and when you see how right they get mr freeze you see how wrong batman and robin got so mr freeze way wrong <laughs> and the, the end of that episode uh i don't want to give away too much but victor freeze's last speech in that episode is amazing so. it, another awesome one well my number one is was very easy to pick it's called Beware the Grey Ghost. <laughs> and this was... Yeah. I, I First of all, I think this is one of the best animated of all the, the whole series. Mm -hmm. There's some beautiful animation in this. But this is a story of... Uh, they flash back to when young Bruce used to watch... It's supposed to be kind of a shadow... The shadow kind of figure on TV. And it was the Grey Ghost. And he was basically a guy with a hat and a cape and a mask. And... He was he's voiced by Adam West, Mr. Adam West, which is another one of those nods to you know who used to be who used to hold the reins, um, the guy who actually played the Gray Ghost uh, in the current in the current time. Uh, he's down on his luck. He's having to sell off all his possessions just to pay the rent, mm -hmm. and there's a terrorist who's using sh uh, uh, themes from the old Gray Ghost shows to bomb Gotham City, like little toy cars, right? Right. Yeah. So Batman has to. It basically encourages the the actor to suit up and go with them to help find this mad bomber and it is a it, it, it's poignant and it's beautifully drawn and animated and it, it it's even got a fun little twist at the end mm -hmm. i i it's it's the first one that comes to mind when I think of this show. Yeah, the one of my favorite parts of that episode is where Batman takes him into like this little room and then turns on the light and all of a sudden there's all this like gray ghost gear uh, uh -huh. and uh, in this mantle and you think, oh, Batman's a little bit of a he's, he's, a, geek. he's a little bit of a fanboy. That's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> so, I, yeah, that's a great episode. Um, okay, moving on to my number one. Uh, my number one episode uh, was titled "I Am the Night." Uh, this episode pretty much dealt with what it means to be Batman. Um, you know, we see these episodes and these movies about Batman overcoming obstacles and, you know, going further than anyone else can. Well, you know, being Batman is really friggin' tough. And, you know, there are moments where Batman doubts that what he's doing is even making uh, a difference. You know, he fights crime all the time and yet all crime just continues to grow. Um, this is the episode where uh, I'm where uh, blah, blah, blah. Commissioner Gordon um, gets shot and Batman realizes, you know what, no matter what I do, people that are closest to me are going to get hurt. And it's just a battle within himself. It's a very, you know, introspective um, episode, but it really shows what kind of person Bruce Wayne is and why he has to be Batman. He can't do anything else, you know. I, I, I Excellent choice. It also shows that bond that, he, that Commissioner Gordon has with him. Yeah, the father-son. Bond. yeah yeah it, absolutely terrific yeah okay so that does it uh for our top five episodes of batman the animated series there were so many great moments on this television show that it's hard to narrow it down to five if you think it's a little weird that we're dedicating this much love to this show keep in mind this is one of the greatest cartoons ever on television yeah and that's not hyperbole, dude. We're no. being freaking accurate on that one. Yes. <laughs> so, if you have any that you'd like to mention, please let it be known at mcguffinpodcast.com, and we'll see you guys next time.